Okay, question number two. During the demo phases of a construction of an adaptive reuse project, you are walking the site and notice what you assume to be asbestos tile. Uh, so adaptive reuse, we're talking about something where it's an existing building that had one use, it's now going to become something else, like it's an old loft building becoming a residential lofts or uh, something along those lines. Um, and adaptive reuse projects have a tendency to have a little bit of a different schedule, a little bit of a different timeline to them because there's often just stuff you don't, just don't know about the building until you start doing the demo. So uh, some construction often happens early in order to figure out what the heck is going on. So it's quite plausible that you might be walking through uh, after you've done a series of design drawings or even construction documents, uh, but still find new pieces of information, new structural situations that were covered up before, new environmental issues like this question is asking. Um, so that's what this is about. Let's look at some of the answers. So the question is, you've come across this asbestos tile, you should, A, immediately stop the work on the site uh, to allow the dangerous materials to be removed appropriately. Well, removed appropriately sounds interesting. How about B, immediately tell the general contractor to stop the work on the site so that they can remove the material appropriately. So that's similar, but talking about doing it through the general contractor. Uh, C, have the material encapsulated in place, show the material to the owner and suggest that they should have an environmental review. So let's look at A and B first. Those both sounded kind of interesting uh, because they talk about removing the material appropriately. Um, but there's something here that you should absolutely be nervous about. Uh, as soon as you see that you are, being, you are saying that I am going to stop the work, uh, I'm immediately going to tell the general contractor to stop the work. Uh, when you see that on one of these exams, as soon as you see the, any situation where the architect is uh, controlling the schedule in any way during the construction process, you know immediately that there's something fishy, there's something wrong there. Um, the architect's role is the design intent and to be the agent for the owner. They're not always the agent for the owner, there's certain topics that's not sort of their purview, but they're generally an agent for the owner and their role is to provide the design intent. Uh, schedules, means and methods, sequencing of, of subcontractors, all of that goes to the general contractor. Now, we're talking about design, bid, build here. This is the sort of standard way where you have an owner that has a uh, contract with an architect and, you, and they also have a contract, uh, presumably an A101, with the contractor, the GC. There are other types of relationships. It could be design, build, it could be a construction manager, there's a whole bunch of other possibilities. But if it doesn't say a different possibility, you should always assume that it's design, bid, build, kind of the standard triumvirate of how these things go. Uh, so, uh, like I said, when you look at A and B, they both have this idea that, okay, this architect is going to walk on the site and just tell people, wait, stop, stop the work. You have no idea about what's going on with the schedule. It's not your role. You sh there's no reason why you would have uh, full knowledge of all the different things going on on the site. There might be penalties if the contractor comes in late. There might be uh, issues of timing with other workloads. So there's a whole series of reasons why you just should not ever do that. It's just not your role, it's not appropriate, and you start taking on liability about schedule, which can be actually pretty significantly uh, in the financial uh, range. So A and B are definitely out. Uh, you're definitely not telling anybody to stop the work. So let's look at C. C has kind of an interesting thing to it. So have the material encapsulated in place. So if you imagine that I have uh, this tile that's sitting there on some mastic uh, and that's sitting on top of uh, some uh, concrete. Sorry, my concrete's terrible, uh, but you get the idea. Uh, and this stuff is starting to fall apart. Um, the way they talk about it with asbestos is it's friable, which means that it, it breaks apart and the little uh, uh, kind of fibrous elements get out and up into the air. And that's what you're really worried about. You don't, um, asbestos is, uh, the, the way it's dangerous is that it actually gets into the air and then gets into your lungs uh, and it uh, can build up in your lungs. Your, your body can't get rid of it and so it builds up in your lungs. So the bad part is that it, it becomes friable, it becomes sort of loose into the air. And often people think, well, it's asbestos, we should get rid of it immediately. But what's usually the best thing, not always, but often the best thing is to 
what they call encapsulate it. So I'm just putting a uh, new layer of flooring, in this case, because it's a tile floor, uh, right across the, the top of it. I'm just covering it over with something brand new. The asbestos, let's say it wasn't tile, let's say it was a pipe wrap or something like that. Well, I would just take a new pipe wrap and I would wrap it all right around it and encapsulate it in place. Uh, this is often the smartest thing to do. It's often the best way to go. Uh, by sheer fact that doing demo on it is likely to make it more friable and put it more out into the air. However, similar to A and B, if you look at C from a sort of abstracted standpoint, step back a little bit, C says, have the material encapsulated in place. That's an awful lot like saying, stop the work, right? You're just unilaterally standing on the site and saying, you, you there, encapsulate that material. You're like, is that really your job during the kind of construction walkthrough to change the scope on the fly unilaterally? Uh, and the answer is clearly no. Um, that it, there may be all kinds of other reasons. There may be, it may not be asbestos. Why spend the money if you don't need to? And uh, it may be, there's a whole series of other possibilities of what could be going on or, or other things that it might be tied into. So clearly the correct answer on two is D and that is show the material to the owner. Remember, you're the agent of the owner. Uh, your role in this kind of situation is to bring the owner up to speed of anything that you think is uh, important for them uh, to, to understand, and then let the owner uh, either get a phase one or if they've already done a phase one, do a phase two. Uh, those are different terms for environmental reviews. Uh, you'll hear phase one is kind of a general review that uh, looks at kind of the history of the building, uh, what, what, what's around, what other kinds of uh, documentation is around from the city, from, from other uh, projects next door, that kind of thing. Phase two is when it starts getting more serious, you start getting into actual uh, measuring and, and testing materials and all of that. Um, something like asbestos tile would be a relatively uh, simple thing, but you would absolutely uh, want to hand that over to the owner to let them do that. Now, thank you, Mike, uh, and thanks to all of you who have tuned in. And if you'd like to attend our next ARE live broadcast, visit blackspectacles.com slash podcast to register. Uh, you'll have a chance to ask questions and share your answers with Mike for live feedback during the broadcast, just like today. Um, and to learn more about our AIA ARE prep curriculum, go to blackspectacles.com. Uh, we'll uh, include, a note, uh, include a link in the show notes. Uh, and for those of you who are ready and, and want to go ahead and get busy preparing for the ARE, uh, you can use a coupon, uh, a 15% coupon off the first charge on any AIA ARE prep membership with code 527-1515-WEBINAR. That's 527-15-WEBINAR. Uh, and that'll expire on June 15th. Um, and of course, if you're already an AIA member, you can visit AIA.org slash ARE prep to get a 30% discount for the entire duration of your AIA ARE prep membership, not just the first charge. Um, and that also uh, expires on June 15th. Um, and finally, uh, please leave a comment below the video to let us know what you think um, and share any suggestions um, that you may have. I promise uh, we'll read every word that you write and use them to tune our next episodes. Uh, so thanks for watching.